Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, I am so thrilled to be a part of the 50th anniversary celebration of the Institute of Cultural Affairs. Uh, I being Paula Barrington, I'm the executive director with the business partners, the Chamber of Commerce for the Uptown community. And um, Karen Sims and Terry were so kind to reach out to us to ask us to be a part of the celebration this evening and to combine our events into one great festivity. Uh, so it's a wonderful kickoff to all the wonderful things that you have planned coming for the next, uh, the next weekend, actually. So again, thank you so very much on behalf of business partners for allowing us to be a part of this and allowing us to invite you uh, into uh, the neighborhood as well. I know we have a lot of visitors here. Uh, I wanted to acknowledge uh, one particular person who serves on the uh, Uptown Board of Directors uh, Board, and that is Karen Sims. Karen, everyone knows Karen, of course, a uh, dedicated person in the community and very active in the community. I also want to acknowledge Lisa Wagner. Lisa is our Associate Executive Director. Lisa, don't be shy. I know you're not. There she is. There she is. And thank you again. She's been just very instrumental and a wonderful ambassador for our chamber as well. Over the course, oops. Hello? Yep. There we are. Over the course of 50 years, the Institute of Cultural Affairs uh, is able to look back over its many accomplishments, which have frankly touched many, many lives throughout not just this community, but throughout the entire United States and globally as well. So there's much to be celebrated and there's much to be proud of, most certainly. And they've always done everything from our view with great passion, with great vision, and great enthusiasm. Very much like our next guest speaker. So if you would, please join me in welcoming President and Chief Executive Officer of the Institute of Cultural Affairs, Terry Bergdahl. Well, we appreciate you coming out uh, this evening to uh, celebrate with us our 50th anniversary. This is one of many events that have been uh, happening around, uh, across the country and around the world. Um, for those of you who may not be very familiar with ICA, we really began as community uh, development people. We began on the west side of Chicago. This building uh, was given to us as a uh, yeah, to serve as an, an international training center for our global work in 1972 by the Kemper Insurance Company. And uh, at that time, we were working in over 30 countries uh, around the world. And uh, as I say, this was a, a place where people came and received training. Uh, we uh, did a number of things throughout those years. Uh, as you walk around the building and you... Uh, look at this floor and the like, you'll see a display from our archives where uh, we did, uh, it's just a few representations of 5,000 town meetings that were held during the bicentennial, uh, which is what, 35 years ago? A long, long time ago. Uh, but one piece of our, our, 50, uh, our 50 years. Um, in the mid-1980s, we restructured uh, uh, whereas we uh, had this as our global headquarters for many years, uh, we did a restructuring where all of our international organizations became independent, uh, uh, locally governed and managed and funded uh, organizations. And in fact, my wife and I, Pam, were in Kenya at the time. And our job was to work ourselves out of a job to turn ICA Kenya into an independent organization. And it's at that time that we began, uh, we created a global federation of ICAs around the world. And uh, uh, ICA here in this country, we began to refer to ourselves as ICA USA. And um, uh, today we are still a part of a global uh, federation. And that our 50th anniversary is really a global celebration that is being done. I'd like to introduce to you one of our... Uh, immediate past presidents of ICA International, Nelson Silver. And so he's here this evening. Nelson, you want to wave to the crowd? We got him doubling up and doing some other tasks, too. Uh, so that's, uh, that's good. I also would like to uh, highlight and introduce you to you our, our chairman uh, of our board of directors, 
of ICA USA. And Randy Williams is back here, and uh, he's a part of our chairman. Uh, our 50 years of uh, work, uh, we believe, is live and well. Uh, as many of you know, this is the largest nonprofit service center in the Midwest in this building. Uh, we have everything from dental and medical clinics uh, for homeless and low-income persons to women's drop-in centers to immigrant service programs, and all of the first five floors uh, are that have been this building. The other thing that uh, I'd like to highlight that we're doing is that this is a location for uh, service learning programs with universities where students come and uh, uh, talk about development of uh, uh, leadership, leadership development in a time of transition, and we host uh, people in this building during those, uh, those training programs. And then finally, I'd just like to highlight that this coming weekend is a culmination of a year and a half of work where we've been identifying uh, community sustainability initiatives across the city of Chicago and all 77 community areas, and on Saturday, day after tomorrow, there'll be a big event called the Share Fair of Accelerate 77 at Truman College. And uh, I want to extend to you uh, all uh, an invitation to attend that. Um, finally, to mark our 50th anniversary, we wanted something unique and special and different. And uh, we, we had the idea that we would like to create uh, an, a piece of art that would be a uh, uh, an icon that we would pass on to future generations. And therefore, 50 years from now, as this organization celebrates its centennial year, they would look back and say, well, uh, well, here was something to celebrating its 50th anniversary. And to do that, we sent out an uh, RFP, a request for proposals, to uh, as many uh, art networks that we could, asking, uh, what would you propose to do for our 50th anniversary in creating that kind of art piece? And we had a committee that served as a selection committee, and they are here tonight, and I'd like to just recognize them also. We've got Barrett Griffith there. Why don't you wave at everybody, Barrett? Right next to Barrett is Ladonia Wagner. Uh, he's here. And then Paul Noah. And so they reviewed many, many different kinds of proposals and the like and interviewed many artists, and they selected, I think, absolutely the correct person to do this work. <laughs> and uh, I want to introduce you to you uh, our artist for our 50th anniversary event. I'm going to ask her to just spend a few minutes talking about this uh, piece of art, and uh, then she'll take some questions and answers uh, before we formally end it. So here is uh, Gina Alicia. Good evening, and thank you, Terry, and thank you to the ICA for this opportunity to create a piece of artwork for you. Thank you to Paul for working with me and answering all the questions that I had when I called, and I was like, hey, what do you think? How big is the wall? You know, like, just so many questions. And he came to my studio, and he was so helpful, and so I'm just so grateful for the team that helped me, and thank you, Karen, for answering questions about how, you know, uh, the whole is process has just really been so supportive, and the ICA has been wonderful to work with, so I just say thank you to all of you. Um, the opportunity to work with the ICA and create a commemorative piece, um, when they came to me and they said, we want a textile artist to do this, and we want um, to you to work with these pieces of fabric, they did 50 events all over the country, all over, you know, 50 events, right? All That's over right. the country? Oh, and 65. <laughs> Wow, okay, I got so many pieces. Okay, so, um, and they wrote their hopes and dreams for the future on pieces of fabric. And I took those pieces of fabric and sewed them together into what is what I consider to be a quilt. Um, it is definitely from the quilting tradition that I came from. I grew up Mennonite and I grew up quilting. So, um, and I have a Master of Fine Arts in Textile Design, so that kind of helps, you know? Um, but I took those strips of fabric, I sewed them all together, and I decided to create what's a brickwork, so to speak. So under the veil, there is what looks like a big wall of graffiti brickwork. Because I took the pieces and after I quilted, I sewed them together, gathered them down from eight, about 18 inches down to about 8 inches. I cut them in half and, and turned them horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, all the way across the, the board there. And you can see how the pieces create this like graffiti wall. And for me, this is the foundation of the ICA. 
This is the foundation of an organization that has a devotion and a commitment to the future of the world and the sustainability of the world, right? And so the, that mission lives and breathes in this veil because this is their mission for the sustainability of the future of our world. And it has to do with the water and the movement of water and the movement of plants and how that is sustained through this commitment of this organization. And that is why I called it the Ocean of Devotion, because they have this passion and commission and this devotion to bring this to other people all over the world, right? And so I brought that and put that into the piece. And I'll tell you, the piece spoke to me, and this is as an artist, this is kind of what happens. You know, I, I drew it out, and I, I showed it, and I presented it as the proposal, and I, I warned them, you know, I'm not quite sure exactly how it's going to come out at the end, because, you know, as you're making a piece of artwork, it morphs, and it grows, and it creates as you're creating it. And so as I was creating it, the day before, oh, did I lose, oh, there was my sound. The day before, I was in my teacher's voice, though. You could hear me back there, right? <laughs> um, the day before I handed this in, I woke up on Thursday morning, and I said, last Thursday morning, and I said, oh, it needs yellow. And here we were in planning week, sorry, principal. Um, here we were in planning week, and I brought this to school. My boss is here. I brought this to school. I laid it out on my tables in my classroom. I work at the University of Chicago Lab School. I'm an art teacher there. And in between meetings, every, in between every meeting I had on Thursday, I was painting these little yellow strips in here. That became nice green, lime green to represent the plants that are moving in the water and the motion and the movement towards the future, right? So, um, and I really feel like it just needed that. And I'm so glad that I listened to my intuition when it comes to creating work because it feels uh, impactful. It feels like that plant energy just needed to be a part of this piece. And I'm very, very happy with it. I'm, and it, please come up and look at it and don't, don't feel afraid to touch it. You can touch it. It's fabric. Um, there's little stitches on here. And besides the painting, there's stitching on the top and there's painting in between those stitches. So, and, and also on the back, there are um, members, because they gave me a whole lot of fabric. I only asked for like, what, six or seven hundred strips? They gave me a whole lot more. <laughs> um, so I ended up making a whole backside to these um, and used those pieces of fabric on the back, and you can see how they are. They're larger on the back, and then they're gathered down to be on the front as well. So I'm really excited about how it came out, and I'm really excited that the IC hat has it here, has it here on display permanently. It's really fabulous. Thank you, Terry, for the opportunity. Well, thank you. What questions would you like to ask uh, Gina uh, about this? Yes, I'm not shy. Um, Gina, were there any particular words or phrases as you were putting this piece together that really, uh, really well, what was lovely is that I got to read every single one of those strips, because I ironed them all. <laughs> and so as I was ironing, I got to feel the energy of the people that participated in this, because the words have energy. You know, we have a dream that has energy. Yes, we can. That has energy. So the energy that was put into those strips, I got to be with that as I ironed each and every one of those. So that really helped put me in the frame of mind that I needed to be in to create this piece. And that was really, really wonderful. And I, from that is where the word devotion came, really. Because there, there's such a commitment from everyone and the things that they wrote. There's such a commitment from the, the members of the organization and for the future of this organization. So, yes. Mm -hmm. How many strips did you say there were? Oh, there's over 800. I stopped counting because I was, I was just like, okay, I'm not going to count anymore. I'm just going to sort them in colors. Yeah, because I started getting into my math mind, and I was like, no, I don't want to be on that side of my brain. I want to be on the other side. It's all about colors and how it works out and how it moves from light colors on this side to, because they got washed and some of the colors washed out, and to brighter colors on that side. Um, so I, I kind of, mm, about two weeks in, I just started shifting from counting. I was like, I'm done with the math. <laughs> so how did you? Yes. I'm sorry. Who wants to go? How did you shrink them? Um, so first washing. 
So washing and drying shrinks them. And then when you sew the strips together, and it's the gathering process, you top stitch it um, with a very loose um, stitch, and then you gather it from about 20 inches all the way down by pulling a thread, and it gathers down, and then you top stitch that about six times, and then cut it apart, and then flip it so that it, um, so for example, um, you can probably see it more right here. So you have horizontal, horizontal, vertical, vertical. So like these, this, this piece and this piece, microphone, this piece and this piece goes horizontal. They are originally connected and I cut them in half and put them here and here. And then this piece and this piece were connected but I cut them in half and put them there and there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they got gathered down, shrunk that way, by gathering. It goes in and out. I'll just hold the bottom. I'll hold the bottom to it. Questions? I had a question. Um, if we can touch it, uh, do, do we have to wash our hands first? Or? <laughs> well, so, yes, there are oils on your hands. So that is a great question. Because, you know, in museums, they don't want you to touch the artwork, right? Because um, there are oils on your hands. But I figured the traffic isn't going to be that high through here. You know, at the Art Institute, um, if you've been in the textile galleries at the Art Institute, you'll notice that they have low lighting because you don't want to have a lot of strong lighting on a textile. So... Prior to installing this, I, I requested, and the ICA was so wonderful about this, to put UV coating on the windows and to change the lighting and put it farther back from the piece and get low lights, only 60 watt and all of that, so that we can protect the piece. Um, so yes, you know, if there were thousands of people coming through here every day with their, you know, and it's not like... You know, I mean, we do have oils on our fingers. Okay. So, you know, but I, I don't think tonight it would hurt <laughs> just to pick up the corner. Um, my hands have been all over this thing, and I've ironed it, and it, it you know, it'll survive tonight. Uh, it will. <laughs> so feel free. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, it'll be all right. Um, questions? Yeah, yes. Yeah. What about the, the fabric's probably cotton, but the, the dye or the paint or whatever you use? Textile pigments. Okay. So textile pigments, when you paint them on fabric, they have to be heat set. And to heat set, you can throw them in the dryer for 45 minutes to an hour on a very high setting, which I did with all of this. And you also iron them. And on, the, on this particular part, on the quilt part, what I did is in between the front and the back of the quilt, I put fusible bond, for anybody that's out there that's a sewer or a quilter, there's fusible bond between the front and the back. Now, I literally took it to school again, myself. Um, I took it to school, I lit, put all my tables together, and I laid it out on the table, and I got up on top of the table with the iron and pressed as hard as I could, and I still could not get that fusible bond to bond the front and the back. And, and uh, it took me hours, and it still didn't bond, so I ended up taking it to the cleaners, and telling them to steam clean that puppy to just make it bond front to back so that, and I didn't have the binding on the edges yet so that I could actually look inside. And the first time they tried it, they said it was done. And I'm like, <laughs> it wasn't bonded. <laughs> I was like, no, no, you have to do that again. Um, so it actually has been pressed and bonded front to back. Um, and so this back piece right here is very, very sturdy. It's very sturdy. Um, and so, you know, um, I forgot what the question was. I got lost on my train of thought. I do that. The fabric, the fabric, the paint, you know, what the paint. It's it, yeah. It's definitely it's definitely it's sturdy, and um, the the paint is permanent. It is textile pigment. It is made. It's kind of like an acrylic, but it has additional bodies added to it so that it adheres to fabric, and it's permanent on fabric once it's heat set. So, and I have. Ironed that entire veil several times. Yes. I heard that there are names of people that have worked with us and have died. Are mm -hmm. they in a certain spot or are they all over? All over. Okay. All over. All over the piece. And I forget what color that was. I think it was some of the black mm -hmm. or in the red. Um, there, so probably right there in the middle and, and on the back there. All over. Cause, and, and I believe, was it Paul and Terry both told me it wasn't necessary that we are able to read every single one of the strips that are on there. They're, they're in there. They're just all smushed up in there somewhere. <laughs> so the energy of them are all in there. 
There was a question over here somewhere. Yes. Was the bonding the hardest part, or was there a harder part? <sighs> well, there was this. There, so I have this art studio that has like a balcony when you come up the stairs, and to get this piece to hang out. I had to like kind of put it over the balcony of the stairwell, my internal, not outside, internal. And I literally had to put, um, they had two sets of eight pound weights, two sets of five pound weights, two sets of three pound weights. I had weights on the top of it so that it wouldn't fall off the balcony. And um, one day, <laughs> a weight fell off the balcony. It did, I don't know, it just oops, took a nose dive from my stairs so I have a nice big dent in one of my beautiful hardwood stairs. Um, um, and this thing, it weighs a little bit of, you know, it, and so to move it, I had a backache quite often um, when it got completely put together. Um, so I, but it was a good thing because it sent me to Pilates in August. So. <laughs> yeah. Gina, because I know that as an artist, you're more than, than a technician. Yes. I'm wondering how, how might you be a little bit different as a result of having created this? Um, what's wonderful is that I haven't had the opportunity to work this large in a while. The last time I did a piece this size was 2006. Um, and I usually only do a piece this size as if there's some place to put it, some place to exhibit it. Because in my home, I have a wall that big that's empty. I got a lot of artwork, <laughs> not only mine but others, and it's up on the walls. And so um, what's really wonderful is to... It was the experience, actually, of making the veil. Um, because the veil, for me, I liked, I, I've done veiled photographs, I've done veiled paintings, and now on this piece, it's a veiled quilt. So this is the first time I've actually veiled a quilt. Um, and for me, what's wonderful about adding a veil is that you're adding an extra layer to the story, right? And um, I have, for years, wanted to loosen up... Um, the storytelling that I do on the canvas or on the photograph, because that's more uh, precise in its imagery. And I wanted to get to a place that oh, I was more fluid with my imagery and more um, like that color field painting that used to be over here, right? I wanted to be more about the, the field of energy of this color that just moves. And, and um, what came to mind for me was my, as I started to paint it, was my experience as a scuba diver and being 80 feet down under the ocean and to see it to be floating, what it felt like to me is that I was floating in the womb of Mother Earth because it's, it's this big body of water where you can float upside down and backwards like an astronaut. You have no sense of gravity and you're floating in this space and you have these plants like seaweed just coming up and that imagery was just in my mind as I painted this. So as an artist, that fed me, and it fed me to want to do more color field painting or more movement painting. Thank you. Let's give a great hand to Gina as our artist. And I think that uh, we now have an art piece that is worthy of our past 50 years of the hand on to the future. So thank you very much, Gina. Thank you. Uh, Paula, would you like to... I will. However, I'd love for Ms. Karen Sims to say a few words. Okay, Karen. I noticed she called me Miss Sims. <laughs> um, we are so honored to have um, 50 years to celebrate community development, but we're also very energized by having preparations for the next 50 years. And one of those preparations and big thoughts for the next 50 years is this gem of a building. It's an extraordinary treasure that we need to nourish. Uh, and for those who are interested, uh, what we'd like to do is uh, have Leslie Showers in the back. She's our building manager. She will do a quick tour of some of the real big sustainability projects that we've addressed. And we're so pleased that we were able to do this and we received some funding because Mary Laura Jones, raise your hand, has been on the case of getting us capital funding to do some of these projects. 
Um, I'm also pleased to announce that last week we were given preliminary Chicago landmark status. Big deal. And uh, 